Hello everybody, Tony Soto here with TheQ.co with my good friend, uh, friend of the Q, and third interview, I believe, on the website, yes. uh, Levi Christ. Hey everybody. How are you? How I'm are great. things? Things are going well. Like I said, we have interviewed Levi three times. One was, I believe, a written interview, and then mm-hmm. uh, we... And then in, right before Halstead days, yeah, and we were together. In Andersonville. Yes. yes. Uh, and then uh, on the street, which was really fun from my phone, you know, we were... <laughs> Low budget. Um, and now here, and you have yeah. things that you need to be talking about. We've got about four days left of me in Andersonville yeah. before I hit the road and do a six city tour, something real quick to knock out for two weeks and sort of set up the release of the new album. That's awesome, which this is coming out on June 20th. June 20th. So yes. I want to know everything. I want to okay. know everything. I want to know where you're going, where what, where's, where's the tour taking you? All right, well, our first single for the new album, Imagine Paradise, came out last week mm-hmm. uh, in a remix package with a lot of great um, DJs from the UK. We've been pushing that and for Joy94.9 in Australia, mm-hmm. who is a really great LGBT radio station with a great listenership so we've just been finding little pockets of support for the for the single uh which leads us up to the tour where we had a sold out show last week in chicago for Ah, the first day yes fantastic uh we're going to new york to dc to raleigh to knoxville to atlanta uh, and then back home to add on some more dates. It's looking like maybe Houston, maybe Toronto. So it'll be an ongoing, the Flying Solo Tour will be an ongoing tour for the next few months. But we're going to come out of the gate with just concentrating on first six cities. Now, do you like to tour? Is it something that you enjoy doing? I do. You know, I love the music portion of it. Mm-hmm. But as you know, when we are uh, our own small sort of entity right um there's a lot of work that goes into you know being able to 80 percent work that goes into the 20 percent of your passion absolutely so that that part is always difficult as you know yeah. so it's 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 not necessarily fun having to to push for four months to get the seats filled but once you're finally there and you get to see face to face for people who have been supportive of you that's really really that's that's worth it i have some of your live recordings and it's so fun to hear you talk back and forth with your audience like you really do Engage them. Right. I've never done a set list in my life. No. I don't. Uh, but I, I've been touring since I was 12 years old. And I think that talking, uh, performing to an audience is sort of like having a conversation. I mm. mean, we can sit down and you and I are not going to really know what the conversation is going to consist of. I don't until ever we, do any homework. At until all. we go. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> so, and that's what I love about performing is that, uh, you know, to exercise that intuitive aspect that mm. says, okay, what, where does this conversation need to go? So that's, in, in, in essence, it's always a new show. There's, no, there's nothing the same. Some cities are new for me. I mean, D.C. I've only played one at a time, so that's uh, a city of development. But mm-hmm. here in Chicago it was, you know, we could have probably booked three more times over. So um, it's it's just sort of building your presence where mm-hmm. you feel it's going to be most impactful. Well, let's talk about the new album proper because I read something about you getting back to your queer roots. Oh. And we man. love queer stuff. This is kind of why we do this. So I would like to talk about that. What, what does that mean that you're getting back to your queer roots? Well, I've been away for so long doing Million Dollar Quartet, mm-hmm. which is grateful because I got to get to know absolutely uh, and so many great people but at the same time you know I started in the LGBT music community I wanted to return to the LGBT community I haven't been able to be a part of that with a new project for a long time since Mm -hmm. 2009 and a part of the great thing about being a part of that is you get to support LGBT media I really think that there's a very important synergy that needs to happen with all you performers all you drag queens and everybody who takes advantage of LGBT media to get your ass online and support your LGBT media. We need each other. That's absolutely We need each correct. other to grow. On a musical level, That's. I just think that this is this album is what uh, I think of when I think of like the period of like ACT UP and late 70s, right. early sure. 80s and what that sounded like for us to find our freedom. Back freedom when our voice was powerful. Yeah, We're yeah. And so the complacent. music that gave us that identity back right. then. So this is kind of a late seventies, early eighties, disco infused R and B kind oh, of that's album. That's fun. And oh, yeah. kind of unlike anything that you've done before. Absolutely. Right? I've never done an album like this before. And I think one of the things that I got frustrated about as a singer songwriter was I began to start creating albums that I felt might have been viable for 
the moment. Right. You know, sure. I mean, the gospel according to Levi was not without its Kelly Clarkson influences sure. because that was hot right then. Right. You know, the, where I belong is, is not without its Kevin DeGraw influences. A little commercial never hurts anyone. Uh, it's true. It's true. But I where the checks come from? It's true. You know, <laughs> there, there's a willingness to sell out in some point of every entertainer. Right? I'm willing. I'm willing. We were just having this conversation. Yeah. I'm willing. <laughs> um. So I just wanted to do what I listened to in my iPod. Yeah. I wanted to do what I have on repeat and what yeah. I love and what I also felt, most importantly, embodied the stories of the backers because every single song is a personalized, custom-written theme song for some of my most generous backers. Right. Everybody who chose that price point, I got to sit on the phone with them and hear their story and uh, hear where they were in life and then be able to take pen to paper and write a song based on their experiences. You <laughs> talk really passionate and serious about like your struggle as being an LGBT yeah. uh, person as well like as out. a church that you were like Religion immersed versus sexuality. in. Absolutely. Yeah. So like, like you bear your soul on a lot of your music. And, I and addiction. That, yeah. <laughs> I've talked plenty about, you know, with the, the, my, my days of experimenting with, well, more than experimenting with, uh, Oh, the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish it were the nineties. Oh, for me, it was the nineties. <laughs> for me, it was the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, because I think that at the end of the day, what is going to really make any independent artist last, mm -hmm. whatever your medium is, right. is finding a way to get out of here about our own ego. Sure. And find a way to connect with what everybody else is experiencing. You're going out on tour. You're yes. going to be promoting this uh, new album that's June twentieth. What what next? What's what what's going to go on after that, Levi? Because I mean, you have not stopped working since I think when I met you. Well, of course, the launch of the new album on June twentieth is going to have to accompany a second single, right? <laughs> and probably a video. So we're so I'm starting to think about how to plan for that as well. Oh, yeah. But I'm really trying to slow down because the other aspect of my life is that I. I just got through with a huge exam to become a spiritual practitioner, and I start ministerial school in September. What? Yeah, so... Wait, you're trying to be a preacher? Well, a metaphysical teacher. I don't know what that means. Okay, well, um, you change your thinking, change your life. I love that. The secret. Oh, oh, it worked for Oprah. It worked for <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> Levi, I'm always, always ready to support you in anything that you do. Thank you. And I Thank love you. having you on camera. I love talking to you, and the key loves you. But thanks. So be Will checking. Will you let me out. interview you sometime? Yes. Okay. I deserve. Y'all hear that? I'm going to interview Tony Soto <laughs> for the key. It's a great story. Um, but check him out on. He's going out on tour. And March 21st is New York City, and it all ensues from there. So check out Levi Christ if you can see him live. Um, I have yet to do that outside of Million Dollar Quartet. I hope to do it soon. Oh, okay. Um, check him out and. We're going to keep giving you more from Levi whenever we can. Thanks, Tony. Cool? Yeah. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Bye.